Hello there. This is Brian Buchanan and Charlie Shaw, members of the Abacus team and Department of Critical Care Medicine at the U- University of Alberta. So we call this the black box discussion as, frankly, we do a lot of our recording of educational tutorials and, and recordings top of a, a library at the University of Alberta campus. Uh, it's a fantastic resource for recording, but it's still a black box with a room full of padding. Uh, certainly, it given us the idea of addressing these black box discussions where they perhaps a bit more complicated, nuanced, and a bit challenging for the novice who to use ultrasound to address. So one of these is, in fact, assessment of the pleural effusion. And l- let me just ask you, uh, Jean, how do you assess pleural effusion for the actual size? Is, isn't I just put the probe there and then it's I just look for the fluid and then have a gross assessment? Or what do I do? It, it can be quite tricky sometimes. It depends on your patient. I think context is everything in the situation. As an example, usually my patients, when I want to do this, I will try to put them in a semi-recumbent position or sitting. But the reality is a lot of ICU patients can't do that. And that changes everything. If you're semi-recumbent or you're sitting, the fluid accumulates right above your diaphragm and it will make a nice big pocket you can go after and see quite easily often. So how do I, how do I measure this exactly? But if you sit your patient here and you're in semi-recumbent position, what you can do is you can freeze your image and you can start measuring from the diaphragm all the way to the actual consulate lung that's above it. And you can uh, multiply the number of centimeters that gives you by about... Uh, if you're in centimeters, 200 milliliters, put an estimate of the amount of volume you'll find at a diffusion. Okay, great. So I mean, so if you're if you're like a patient who can at least sit up, then then this measurement will work well. But in the ICU, our patients oftentimes are kind of stuck on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, mm-hmm. and and this really I find this is really challenging because like what do I do here to assess the volume? If, because you know, I can make the fusion look big or small. So, in a patient that uh, has to say supine, you can't actually do the head to toe measurement, but what you can do is you can use an actual transverse plane in which you will take your probe nine degrees from the head to toe position, cutting the patient as you would in a CT scan plane. When you see that view, you end up with the aorta at the bottom if you're on the left side, a lung that's consolidated, and your uh, chest wall cavity. And if you do a measurement straight from the lung across to the, the chest wall at more or less parallel position to the floor, since the patient is supine, you will end up being able to do a similar measurement. The number of centimeters, again, multiplied by 200 will give you an approximate amount of volume that you have in your chest cavity. So, I mean, you could probably slide the probe up and down the chest here and really get an, an adequate size of the actual volume. And I think, you know, doing it this way, I could probably make it easier on myself to determine about a safe insertion site um, for, say, a, a pigtail drain, because this can be quite challenging in the, in the lateral thorax. Just be mindful if you're going to use this to decide on an insertion point for a pigtail, as an example, that you want to make sure that your spot you're at um, is, is not a single little slice in which there's a, a slice of fluid. So what I would suggest is put your probe on and keep it at the same space and angulate back and forth to make sure that you actually have an amount of fluid in different uh, directions so that if you are not perfectly straight down, you, act, you have space to, to miss your angle a little bit and get into the, the, um, the pleural cavity without damage. It's nice. So here's another example here. We can see uh, it can really gives you a, a better sense in the axial transverse plane of the severity of a pleural effusion. Um, in which case we can measure uh, the volume in centimeters or milliliters and multiply by the relevant factors. Again, as, as uh, Jean has said here, if you measure it in centimeters, then it's 200 um, as a multiplication factor. If you measure it in millimeters, it's, it's 20, uh, 20 mils per millimeter. This diagram, in fact, shows you on a patient what each side of the thorax looks like in a transverse view. And I think in some cases, just gives you a much better perspective of how much fluid is there. Again, it's an unusual view, but certainly a helpful one in the critically ill and supine patient. So any other points there, Jean, that you have to comment on? I think the main point that you need to think about is that this, this is a 2D image of a 3D structure. So you want to be mindful of using multiple planes if you can to locate and identify structures appropriately and prevent any complications from both your diagnostics and also your procedural interventions. Fantastic. Well, that's the closing of our black box discussion. I'd like to see you guys later. Bye for now. Bye for now.